Welcome in to Rattler Up with Coach Walsh, live from the San Marcos High Schools and Rattler Broadcast Studio. This is what we've got. You've got to watch every Monday night to keep track of all things Rattler Nation. I'm your host, CJ Odom, and with me as always, San Marcos Athletic Director and Head Football Coach, John Walsh. Coach, welcome into Rattler Up. Good to be here again. All right. Well, after a Thursday night lights, how did it feel to have your Friday, not free, but right. no game day? Uh, it's a longer weekend, I guess you could say, but we don't, we don't ever take days off, you know, so it's... <laughs> It wasn't too much different for us. All right. Well, this week on Rattler Up, we're going to make up for not having our show this last Labor Day, and we're going to get an update on two big games the last two weeks against Madison and Wagner. Plus, we'll look ahead to this Friday's long trip to Laredo for the game against the Alexander Bulldogs, and we'll be joined in studio by two senior Rattlers, quarterback Isaiah DeLeon and linebacker Jake Darling. So, Coach, getting back to this past weekend, you get the Friday without a game, so were you a little more able to take in and enjoy some college football? Uh, yes, and I got to watch Maggie play some college volleyball. Oh, Te awesome. Texas State was home in the tournament. So, uh, yeah, I got to watch her play two games and then uh, got to finally watch some good college football. <laughs> now, I've got to believe, now, you know, you're, you've had other – we've talked before, you've had other students that have played college ball, but I've got to believe as a parent that's something that just doesn't get old. But I'm sitting in the stands. Right in a college program watching my child play. Yeah, no doubt. It, it's, it's always special, and, and uh, you're always nervous for them. You never know if they really can. Can they play college ball? And so to see her out there, and she got her first kill this week. So awesome. uh, it's, it's, it, it's a lot of fun. And, and to see her having fun doing it. Right. Well, now, talking college football, of course, we want to get your take, Coach. What was more surprising to you, Texas going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Alabama or Appalachian State upsetting A&M? I'd have to say the most, uh, it would have to be a and I, I did not expect that uh, collapse, <laughs> as you could call it. Uh, still was surprised how Texas played, but uh, once that game started and you watched their defense, you knew that that was probably going to be a barn burner. Right. Now, a lot of people are saying if Ewers stays in the game, they probably hold on, or you have that belief, it's uh, hard to project that no, kind of thing No, I out. think 100%. He looked good. He was on. Uh, I think if Ewers stays in the game and the officials don't call that a – a uh, roughing the passer in the end zone. In the end zone, right. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. Well, it's, it's crazy. It's exciting time for Longhorns fans, disappointing time for Aggies fans, and I don't think I have the heart to talk NFL and the Cowboys this week, Coach. <laughs> Please don't. I just don't. Well, let's get back to Rattler football and take a look at two weeks ago at what would end up being the first of two back-to-back -back overtime games for the boys as the Rattlers took on Madison at Rattler Stadium. Now, this was a game that San Marcos was largely in control of for most of the game, but Madison showed some resilience and just kept knocking on the door. In the fourth quarter, they were, in fact, able to get a touchdown pass with just 56 seconds left in regulation to force overtime. And in overtime, running back Jake Rodriguez Schultz got the rushing TD to give the Rattlers the lead. And on Madison's subsequent possession, the Rattler D holds and secures the 31-24 victory for San Marcos, their first of the year. Now, Coach, looking back on that game, what stood out to you most? You know, playing an overtime game early is always um, a, a new thing, a challenge. Because you haven't really, we haven't got that part of the season where you're even covering overtime situations in practice. So uh, I was just proud, you know, when they when we gave that touchdown up late, uh, momentum should have been on Madison's side going into OT. And the offense, we came out, uh, we did what we we lost the toss, so we got the ball first, put the ball in the end zone, and then I uh, was really proud of our defense. It's hard to get stops in overtime mm -hmm. uh, because you're starting a 25 yard line. You know you got four downs. Uh, so really proud that they, they bowed up and uh, got to stop. But I think that's the theme for this week as we review those two games, just proud of the boys for way, the way they step up under right. pressure. And I think that's going to be what we continuously talk about as we look through these games. You know, it's two different, you know, I'm kind of getting ahead of this week's overtime game, and I'm sure you're going to explain it. But last, you said it, we were in control of the Madison game and let it slip to get to overtime. Right. This last week, we never felt like we were going to lose the game, but we were never in control, and we made too many mistakes. We had three turnovers, one in special teams, two on offense, that um, I would say first to the end of the third quarter, didn't it felt like gloom and doom, and then we came back and, uh, and did some special things to make it a, uh, an overtime game. Right, and so you talk about it early on in the season. What are the benefits to getting that experience, yeah. that overtime pressure experience early? Again, we've talked about it before. It's not that these pre-district games don't count. They certainly do. Right. But they are all in preparation for the five that count. Got to be huge to get this kind of pressure situation early on because you can't force it. You can't no. create it otherwise. No, we've, you know, our first three weeks have been fantastic, really. Uh, you know, we lost the opener. And we didn't play like we should have, so we had to deal with humility, you know, as a football team and a program. We look ourselves in the mirror, 
and then we came back and had two good battles and came on different ends of the overtime, you can't create those lessons. And you want, as a head coach, to put your kids through as many lessons as you can so they're prepared for the games that do count to get you into the tournament. And that's one of those things where now in one of our five district games, if we head to overtime, been, been there, done that. Been right? there, done that. They, they, they've, been, they, they've heard it all, seen it all. We had a kick last week, we had to kick an onside kick and go for two to even get into overtime. So right. uh, we, we've done a lot so far in three weeks. It's, it's been a good <laughs> first three weeks for sure. Now, we talked on the last Rattler Up before Labor Day about kind of cleaning up penalties and mm -hmm. some of our own self inflicted wounds. Now, after the Madison game, there was definitely improvement in that, but right. there's still some work to do, I would assume. Yeah, there's still, and it's, it's frustrating. I had a team meeting today and we talked and talked and talked about it. Uh, I even, I don't think I'm joking. I think I'm going to buy two helmets and paint them yellow. And if the, the, on offense and on defense, whoever got the most penalties is going to have a yellow helmet on the game just so I can show the Rattler fans I'm doing everything I can to, <laughs> uh, to get these penalties gone, you know, because that, that game at Wagner would not have been an overtime game if we don't get penalties. So right, right. before regulation was over, we had the ball on the two-yard line with two downs ago and I think 40 seconds. So mm -hmm. we punched those in. And we got a 15-yard penalty right. that backed us up that made us have to kick the field goal. Are they situations of nerves? I highly doubt they're situations of lack of preparedness, knowing the kind of camp you run. Right. Uh, is it nerve? What What do you kind of, or is it something you can even broadcast, say out loud as oh, one big thing? I'm know? an honest guy, and, and I think it's defense is not getting as many as the offensive side. Mm -hmm. I'm an offensive coach. Uh, I I will kind of give us, a, I guess, a free pass on the new guys because we got a lot of new guys. But, you know, it's, it's time to grow up now. You're juniors. Even right. though you're new, you're not, you're not a new sophomore out there. And uh, this, is, this is something I, you've got to believe can be addressed in the two weeks remaining right. prior to the bye week. I was, right. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and what I think I like about this week is today's practice, I heard our kids talking about it. We had a, we had a, uh, you know, a kid jump off sides, and I hear all of them talking about it now. And this is what's killing us, blah, blah, blah. So I think we're, I think we're maturing to know that this yeah, is what's good. killing us. Well, and that's, that's what this pre-district time of the year is for, right? Absolutely. Knowing, okay, when I get in these pressure situations, I can't jump. I can't do this. Well, if uh, overtime football is fun, the Rattlers certainly decided lately to deliver it in double time as the very next week, this past Thursday, they would travel to San Antonio to take on the Wagner Thunderbirds and find themselves in yet another overtime situation. This one was crazy, Coach. In this game, it was the Rattlers that found themselves knocking on the door as Wagner just could not keep San Marcos away, and the Rattlers were down 10 with just five minutes to go. They would make a late drive capped off by fourth and goal conversion from the three-yard line from Schultz and get within three. The Rattlers would still need some magic, however, facing an onside kick situation. That's where Schultz joined the hands team and makes the recovery, giving the Rattlers the ball with a chance to win it in regulation. Wagner's defense stepped up, however, and stopped the Rattlers on the goal line, stopping what looked to be San Marcos' chances for the night. But the Rattler defense took their chance to step up, keeping Wagner off the, off the field with some time remaining, giving the offense that one more chance. And newly minted kicker, senior defensive back Matthew Flores hits the 27-yarder, and the game heads to overtime. So, Coach, before we get into the Wagner overtime, right. uh, just talk to us about the feeling in that last five minutes of the game. That is uh, as roller coaster of a five minutes. Right. Of, it, it was 40 minutes of live time right. to play five minutes of clock. Just talk to us about that feeling for you, for your coaching staff, for the fans. Well, I think first and foremost, it was fun, you know, yeah, because because we're down, uh, we're clawing back, and you can see it in the kids' eyes. Uh, and what we had going for us offensively this week is we protected Isaiah good, and 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 Isaiah threw the ball well. And we know if we protect, he can throw. And then we got Tony Diaz involved a lot, and he's a big weapon for us. And Cutter caught some balls. Uh, DJ caught a ball. Uh, so we had our full package going, and uh, so that last five minutes was a roller coaster. But it was, man, it was it was it was fun to watch the kids engage. It was fun to kids uh, still having to learn things, you know, because we're not a big two-minute offense team. Mm -hmm. You know, we like to run the football, play action pass. So when we go two-minute offense, I'm usually on the numbers screaming to play as loud as I can, so I don't have a voice, and the kids are lining up fast. So a uh, lot of fun, and our defense was at a disadvantage this week. Uh, we didn't have Jaquavius, mm -hmm. we didn't have AJ, we didn't have uh, Malachi at corner, and we lost Vega play number six. Right. Four huge uh, guys that, that, that we were missing our defense. So we were playing a bunch of guys that that was their first game out there for a lot of for a lot of playing time. So and they uh, get into that white knuckle situation. Yeah, oh yeah. In game one. No right. doubt. No doubt. So uh, one play in particular, how about Isaiah's fourth down conversion on that 
final drive. He's yeah. seemingly on his way down, finds the man, gets it converted. Uh, that's and We talk about pressure. I think you've got a quarterback that handles it as good as anybody in the game. Yeah, absolutely. He's big. He's strong. Uh, he understands our offense. And, you know, fourth down is pretty desperation right there. I think we have it. I think it's pretty big yardage, 12 yards we got to get maybe. Uh, Tony found a seam across the middle. And I'm pretty sure uh, Isaiah's getting hit somewhere in the lower body and finds a way to deliver it uh, to Tony, and Tony got the first down for yeah, us. Yeah, it was incredible. And now in overtime, after an incredible fourth, that, that incredible conversion, the Rattlers would make their way into the end zone and go up seven. And then, however, Wagner's first overtime possession, they'd score a touchdown. They elect to go for two. They get the conversion, and they pick up the heartbreaking 42-41 victory. So uh, take us through your thoughts of that overtime yeah. as whole. Again, a, a so, second lost coin flip. Do we call heads both weeks, tails? Do we switch uh, our coin flip strategy? I'm always tails. I'm always <laughs> All right. tails. All right. I didn't get to call the last one. Uh, I got to call this one. It was heads. But, you know, what? hindsight, and uh, I should know better than this, when you're missing four starters and, and they run the offense they do, which is a double slot, triple option, uh, and they were hurting us on the perimeter all night long, uh, I should have went for two um, and when we scored first to keep, okay. the pre- to keep the pressure on them. Uh, it's not the it's not the call by the book, but knowing we were down, Jay, AJ, and Vega, feeling in that moment, we right. I, I should have went for two, and it, it right. never crossed my mind until we got done, and then uh, I wanted to bang my head against the bus. So, what do you think of Wagner's decision then to go for two? Yeah, in that situation? they weren't stopping us, so they, it was very smart. It was real smart right. to do. Okay, so I, I I would imagine you knew you almost anticipate that from the get go. As soon as they get the ball, you're thinking they score, they're going for two. We've got to be ready. I wish I'd have been thinking for that, but I, or I'd have gone for two. But, but you, uh, yes, right, yeah, right. I'd have gone for two. Well, all right. Well, we, we know that the, the pressure was there for two games in right. a row. Uh, Thursday night game, just a little curiosity. We're always – the schedule, I think, fascinates a lot of people right. aren't involved. Um, how does that throw your weekend plan off? You still have your Saturday. Does Friday become your Saturday? Yeah. When it's Thursday night lights, what's the weekend look like? Well, for we're Rattlers? in school Friday anyway, so we got the kids up there. So we get the film graded and done, and we give the kids all day off Saturday. So okay. I really don't mind a Thursday here and there uh, just to get the kids some rest. What's the injury update, especially with those four defensive? Uh, yeah, Jay's, Jay could probably play if we were in district, but we need him full tilt. So uh, I don't know if he's going to watch this, but I'm probably going to keep him out again. But okay. uh, we, we'll evaluate him next week. AJ's good to go. Uh, Vega had surgery today on his collarbone. It was one of those good breaks, if you can have a good break. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's back and forth. When you, when you break your collarbone, I've had this experience with players, and you go with the plate because of where it's at, it comes back better than ever, and you're ready to play in a month. So oh, okay. he's just going to miss four weeks, we believe, and uh, be back by district. Okay. Well, we've heard from Coach Walsh, and when we return, we'll hear from a couple of the players themselves involved in these exciting overtime games. As after this break, seniors Isaiah DeLeon and Jake Darling join us here at the Rattler Broadcast Studio. Keep it here on Rattler Up. Oh, on the front here? All right, welcome back to Rattler Up with Coach Walls. Each week coming to you from the Vipe YouTube channel and the San Marcos High School Rattler Broadcast Studio. We are now joined in studio with Rattler, this week's Rattlers of the Week, senior quarterback Isaiah DeLeon and senior linebacker Jake Darling. Uh, Gentlemen, welcome into Rattler Up. It's good to be here. All right. Well, uh, first of all, congratulations on being named Rattlers of the Week. Uh, Not your first rodeo as far as those kinds of accolades go. Uh, but talk to us a little bit, just in general. I'll give both of you a chance to uh, talk to us about what it's been like these last two weeks with these incredibly close overtime games and back-to-back contests. Isaiah, we'll start with you. Um, I think it was uh, good to have that early in the season so that um, later in the season, whenever 
uh, things start to break down or you get into late, late uh, close games, you have that experience earlier in the season that um, helps you in those situations. Okay. Jay, going on the defensive side of the ball, what was it like for you guys on there, over there? You know, um, early, you know, it's good to have this again in early in the season. We've been through some trials and tribulations early. Um, you know, it's been kind of a roller coaster, um, you know, both overtime games. Um, you know, came up, our defense came up clutch the first game, and, you know, this last game we just fell short. So really just learning those experiences and just remembering that every, that, um, every game comes down to, like, five to six plays, so we got to be on our A game all the time. So hold on to it. I'll check in with both of you on this one, too. Walk us through, especially last week, the, uh, the final five minutes. We were talking, you heard us talk with Coach in the last segment. Walk us through what's the feeling on the sideline when, when you're on the sideline and his boys are out on the field and vice versa as you're watching this roller coaster just develop over the final five minutes of that game. I mean, really, like, like when I'm off the field, I'm just like, you know, I'm just really, really, my helmet's on. I'm just getting ready to play. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if, you know, <laughs> it's just, you know, I'm just getting ready to get on extra point or whatever, just get ready for defense. So I'm just, and I'm standing next to Coach Walsh now, ready to, you know, get put in a tight end. So just waiting. Excellent. Excellent. What about you, Isaiah? When defense is making their stops, what, what are you doing on the sidelines? What's the offense doing? Um, most of the time we're, we're back meeting for what we're going to do on the next um, possession. But in that game, we did that, but we were watching the defense. We, we wanted the ball back and uh, to go make a play. Yeah, it kind of stinks for those guys because, you know, we're, we have to think worst-case scenario. We have to think they're not going to get a stop and what are our next, what's our next plan because if we just become cheerleaders, then uh, our, our, if they don't get a stop, then we're, we're in a bind because right. we didn't go and, – and vice versa. They have to, you know, they have to, you know, do the same, hey, we've we got to get back on the field and get a stop for the offense, you know. So uh, they don't get to be spectators much. Yeah, I think that's something I, a lot of people realize that, but I think there's probably a lot of people that don't. Like, right, no doubt. You're, you're not just on, so to speak, when you're on the field. Right. You come off the field, you're getting ready for the next time you return to the field, and, and you know that that could be any time now, right? And these guys are pivotal for us. Him, uh, Pax, another one, because they bring off information to us. You know, we can see so much from the field of the box, but they're out there live, and uh, we count on them to feed us information on what we need to do because this, certain, this is going on down there in the trenches. So obviously one of the games goes our way, the other one not quite, both incredibly impressive performances by both. Uh, break down your offense and defensive squads. What was most impressive to you about the way your squad handled both of those clutch situations, starting with you on offense? Um, I think it's just we were, we were down late, like 10 or so. 11, yep. Yeah, and then um, just being able to go down and score and not um, get our head out of the game at all. We stayed in the game. We were going to go down and score and give ourselves a chance to win the game, and I think that was the most impressive part. Cool. What about what about the defense? What impressed you the most about your, your squad? I think, you know, honestly, in the both, uh, both those games, we came out a little bit flat, but, you know, near the end, we kind of rallied together, and we were just, you know, we were just feeding off of each other's energy each time we made a play. We were... We were there to um, hype up each other, and then when we were, you know, when we missed a play, we were there to, you know, encourage the others, you know, encourage up each other to make that play again. So right now, it's it's interesting. Something that uh, I think that it's for us that are within the bubble of San Marcos, right? We know what we know about our team and our players, and one thing that this community knows full well is you just don't count us out. Huh. We have spent the last several years coming from behind, coming from behind. It's just a known thing. I loved last Thursday on the KSAT broadcast. I don't know where the announcers are from. They are not local San Marcos. They're not homers, right? They were just the KSAT broadcasters. And on multiple occasions made reference to the fact that you just don't count San Marcos out. Uh, how, how, how important is that to all three of you? That you know, other people are watching and realize you can't count this team out until the final, final buzzers. Yeah, I think as the head coach, you know, I, you know, I want to be – you know, I want to – I want to win, obviously. They do, too. We want to be out in front, not after trail because we're playing so great. But if we're going to be known for anything, it's going to be known for being physical, uh, playing hard. And when you play teams that are physical and play hard from start to finish, you definitely can't count them out. All right. What do you guys – how, how did that make you feel, knowing that others are taking notice of that particular character? I mean, it's great to, for the community to have her back. Um, you know, I just – you know, as a team and what I want to do is I want to give back to the community by getting some Ws. Absolutely. Um, I think it's cool to see that we've shown that um, we may get behind the game, but, but um, we'll always fight back. And right, the well. great thing is I get, I get the bird's eye view. There really is no panic in our guys. You know, that, you know, they make a lot of great plays, but they both make a bad play in football. You're going to. And they just never panic. There's always uh, confidence. And, and so I'm, I'm excited about them. 
So take us uh, behind the curtain, so to speak. Take us onto the practice field and talk to us a little bit about what coaches are doing in practice that you think has done the most to get you guys ready to have done as well as you did in these pressure-packed last two overtime games. Um, well, we work our huddle a lot in practice because uh, our huddle is um, something that we try to use as a big advantage uh, in our games. And um, throwing the ball specifically last week, we um, – we're working that in practice a lot, and it, and it really showed in the game last week because we threw for 200 yards or something like that, and um, it just made us more diverse. I mean, um, our Coach Clyber really structures our practice really well. So, like, Monday and Tuesday, we're really learning that scheme. And then usually Wednesday and Thursday, we're kind of going over, like, maybe there's some small formations they throw in. Last week, um, you know, we, we actually – actually, um, sorry. We went, over, uh, we went over the gate. And we actually got to see that on the field. And it was actually ran a little bit differently than we practiced. But since we were able to see that look, we were able to play against it. So really, you know, Coach Kleiber um, just, you know, saying that, like, we're having those meetings in the morning. We're really learning, like, what our job is. And then he's throwing out some new information at us, throwing out some new schemes, new blitzes, all that stuff. He's just throwing stuff at us because as a defense, you always have to adjust to what the offense is doing. And I'll speak to that because when you see Gate in week three in the middle of a game, you see it on the, on the goal line. Uh, head coach is like, all right, do we need to call a timeout? Because I'm not around him at all. We, we practice. I'm, I'm straight into the offense. Uh, I don't question anything we do on because I got a lot of trust in them. Uh, but they came out in that gate, and I'm like, hey, let's get a, I got a timeout. I got a timeout. And Clyber just kind of said, no, we got it. I was like, yeah, well, no, we'll call a timeout. And Coach Thompson says, we got it. So I'm looking out there, and we look, we look sound. So I said, all right, I'm like, I got to save a timeout because awesome. they're prepared. Because they're prepared. Yeah. That's, that's huge. Well, let's, we're going to get a chance to take a look at some highlights here. We're going to start with a defensive package highlight. So uh, they'll kind of just run through, and we don't have to break down each move of every highlight. But take a look, Jake. This, this first package is some defensive highlights from the last couple weeks. Talk to us. Big, big drop for loss there. What are some things you're seeing in these highlights that stand out to you that make the defense so special so far this year? Yeah, on both of these right here, um, we're just working. We're working our stunts right now. And, um, you know, Corey right here on this play right here, he – he really takes that outside tackle's uh, shoulder, so he turns him, and then I just go inside, run that, run that tight stun, and then the running back's right in my lap. And, um, ooh, I like this one. Yeah, we're just playing, we're just playing sound football right here, sm um, traditional smash mouth football. That's, that's the Rattler brand of football right here. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got. Just, um, Coach, what are some patterns so right, you see? I'll, I'll say that, that last play right there, uh, is that Vargas 50? Uh, that was uh, that was Luna. So Luna, you know, when you don't get blocked as a D lineman, you usually are undisciplined and try to fly around. Well, he he popped his feet and froze. It's real discipline ball right there. That's why they were trying to read him. And he play. He, he, we run the same play. And it, you hate it when a D lineman's disciplined and pops his feet. All right, well, we're gonna switch. If you could, Josh, pull up the next set of packages here. Uh, we've got again, you guys, are the Rattlers of the week. Let's highlight the work that you've been doing. So Jake, we're gonna take a look at some Jake Darling highlights. So walk us through some of the things we see here. Big hit there. There's the gate. That was the gate. That was, <laughs> that the, was gate. the gate. That was I was ready for gate. that one. I'm glad I didn't call time out. All right, <laughs> so, all right. Worked out perfectly. Yeah, there's another stretch. Had to really, I was playing kind of a really tight five, so I really had to read that guy's hip. Perfect, yeah. There, that's the same play again. You know, we didn't play the perimeter well. And, I, and no. when, when Jake's making those plays, they, they were huge for us because, mm -hmm. uh, we just didn't have a good force that night. Okay. It was just tough. We were getting reached a lot by that uh, slot receiver right there. But, you know, it just it takes everyone flying to the ball, to, you know, to make these plays. You know, right, right. It can be anyone, honestly. And there's sometimes where even if something's busted, you're able to turn it into something good, right? So right. If, you, if you stay fired up, you, you can recover and still make a play in the same moment. Right. And like I say, effort never betrays you. So as long as you're, as long as you're giving your all and, you know, even if you screw up the play, uh, screw up the play but if you give your 100%, you screw up the play with that 100%, I love that. We're gonna get those you can make plays. Made, coach. Oh, yeah. Effort never betrays you, Jake <laughs> Darling. I love it. All right, well, let's switch over. We've got a third set here to take a look at. And so, Jake, uh, sorry, Isaiah, let us know on offense some of the bigger – Bigger moments here from the last couple of weeks. Well, that these one, are all going to be this week. That that one was early in the game, first drive, and it was it was really good to get that that playoff because that was at least forty yards downfield. Confidence booster early on. Yeah, and that one was good for Tony. He had a couple drops here and there, but to have that that touchdown, it's a big. And you've got faith in a there. receiver that you throw a ball up like that for, mm -hmm. right? I think this may be – no, yeah, yeah this is, is. That was the fourth this is our down. fourth down conversion. Yeah. Walk us – we're going to see others, but I want to hear about that one. Walk us through your, your, your mindset as you feel it. You've got the footsteps closing in on you, and you're still able to make the play. Well, that one we called the same play 
three plays earlier probably, and I, I, it was it was my bad on that play. I didn't throw a great ball. So on that play, I was just um, in my head making sure I got the ball off. We had to get a first down. It was fourth down. It was for the game, and um, they had a linebacker coming free at me, so I was just um, staying calm in the pocket because uh, I think that one of, the, one of those plays is one of the hardest plays to make for a defensive player on a quarterback because mm -hmm. they're going from still from still to moving suddenly. It happened uh, in the Alabama-Texas game at the end. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just trying to stay calm and deliver the ball to Tony and get a first down. All right. Well, those are our highlight packages. We can run those. Those are our highlight packages from our Rattlers of the Week, Isaiah DeLeon and Jake Darling. One last question before I let you guys go. How are you feeling about the upcoming road trip? We'll talk about it after here in just a moment, but the upcoming road trip all the way down to Laredo this week. How does your mindset feel knowing you got a bus trip ahead of you? Well, it is a long trip, <laughs> but um, I think we're leaving pretty early. We're at 11.30. And, um, 1130. Oh. So we'll, we'll, get, we'll get down there and have time to settle in. And we, before the games, we, we go to a, a church or anywhere we can, and um, we'll have a prayer, and we'll have a, a, one of our, um, what's the word for them? Chaplains, chaplains, yes. One of our chaplains will um, speak to us um, for the the pregame uh, faith family football. Was that what it's called? Faith football. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus football. Football life. life. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it's close enough. Um, now they may not be. They may, may not make it. I haven't heard from them yet. Just, I haven't heard they're coming a long trip yet. I may have to. We have may have to do it. Us three. Well, that's what that's what we usually do. <laughs> right, right. And then uh, we'll we'll eat as a team and. Um, We'll get ready for the game, and we'll meet after that. And uh, that really helps us settle into to the game plan and, and get ready to play the game. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's give you both an opportunity to get some shout-outs out there. Who, who are some folks you want to thank for getting you to this point? Thank you, Mom and Dad. And um, I'd also like to thank, you know, all the trainers and all the people and my coaches and everyone who's, you know, just been pouring into me for these past two years in San Marcos, you know, just developing me, just um, both my uh, physical my uh, mental, and my mental game. Just really in my skills, just, you know, really trying to be, I've been crafting a lot this summer. And, um, you know, just up to until this point, I'm just really thankful for all the people that poured into me. Um, a lot like he said, yeah, thank you to the people in San Marcos um, who helped me succeed. And then uh, to my parents for giving me the opportunity and, and putting me in, in places to succeed. So. All right, well, thank you again, Isaiah and Jake, for joining us and being our Rattlers of the Week. Appreciate you coming in, and we're excited to have you, and good luck the rest of the season. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, well, coming up, we're going to look ahead to this Friday night as we make the long trip down to Laredo, as we mentioned, and we will be taking on the Alexander Bulldogs. So, Coach, big, long trip, and we'll talk about the trip itself as we move along, but we also want to talk about Alexander specifically. So this week we head down. The Bulldogs share a 1-2 and two record with us, having got their season opening win against Holmes, but dropping their next two games against Harlan and Miller before hosting the Rattlers Friday night. They have a balanced offensive ta attack. They have 216 passing yards in the year, 227 on the ground. So, Coach, what's the ultimate outlook for this week against the Bulldogs? You know, the scout report is they're big up front in the trenches, both sides. Like when I say big, like 320 big. They're wow. big. They're big boys. Um, you're right, they're balanced on offense. They got some tall receivers that are some matchup problems. Uh, and then defensively, uh, they're, what the good thing about them is they are, for us, is they're, they're, there's one of those teams that they're simple, but they're good at being simple. You know, So we know where they're going to be, but they're good at what they're going to be. So uh, got, we got to work. It's a long trip. Uh, it's, it's a kind of different brand of football, I think, than okay. we've seen the last three weeks. So um, always a challenge, but uh, I think we're up for it, and today was a good start to the week. Okay, well, let's look at that trip. 201 miles from school to school. Google Maps is calling it three hours and 20 minutes, but i got to believe that's a lot longer when you're on a bus. Yep, we, and, have, we uh, have planned for four plus. We, <laughs> and if we go to our third straight overtime, that'll make for a heck of a, <laughs> a late Friday night. So what happens on Saturday morning this week? Sleep. They already know they got the week that day okay, off. There's, so no way, thing, yeah, right? there's no way we're going back up there on it's Saturday. It's a late, late projected uh, ride home or return home for no sure. No doubt. So uh, two games to go between now and the bye week. Yep. When we get that bye week, we begin district play. What are some things that you feel need to still be accomplished over these next two weeks to get us ready for district? Number one, get healthy. You know, I think uh, Jay's so big to our program since I've been here. You know, he's got to be out there. You watch Jake make those plays. It's good when you got Jay and Jake on both sides making those plays. Uh, getting Vega, so getting Vega back, all the above. Uh, 
We got a guard, Martin Ruiz, may or may not play with him ankle this year. So getting healthy by, uh, by open weeks, pivotal. Uh, and the next pivotal thing, which, which you opened up with, uh, the brand, our, our football is going to get better. You know, we have good coaches here. We have good players. We got players that want to win. So that part I'm not worried about, uh, but the penalty count's got to go away. Uh, 100% is what has kind of been our Achilles heel. Okay. Well, we know it's going to be a long drive, but we know Rattler Nation can do it. So make that drive. Coach, coach will provide that note for your boss, I'm sure, <laughs> to help us bring a huge crowd out to Laredo this Friday night. Well, that's going to do it for this week's Rattler Up, live from the San Marcos High School Rattler Broadcast Studio. Coach, second weekend, what have you thought of our new home here for Rattler Up? It's getting better each week so far. Oh, yeah. The hi- how about the highlights? The highlights out here. Yeah. I feel like I'm in Channel New Studio. It is. It has been fantastic. Josh over at Vipe and Jack Moore with his students in the broadcast uh, program have done some great stuff. We're excited. I think every week they're going to have something new for us to play with or use here in the studio. So it's, it's an fantastic. exciting time for Rattler no Up. Doubt. Well, before we go, we want to remind people again of all the opportunities they have to catch the Rattlers in action this week. Golf gets its season started this Wednesday night, first tournament of the year, uh, back or Wednesday during the day. Back to school scramble at Jimmy Clay in Austin. Swimming also ready to get underway as they open up this Saturday in New Braunfels for their first meet of the year. Volleyball is off Friday night, but they will be here in the Snake Pit tomorrow night against St. Michael's Academy. Varsity starts at 6.30. If you haven't made your way out to volleyball, they too getting that pre-district run ready to go for for district play, so you got to get out there and support them. Uh, of course, don't forget about Goodnight and Miller. Get out there. Uh, you know those, those sports seasons are up and running as well. Don't miss a chance to see those future Rattlers, and we'll talk about those as well in upcoming Rattler Up editions. And as we said, this Friday night, Rattler Nation travels to Laredo, Texas, as Sam Marcus takes on the Alexander Bulldogs. Kickoff is at 7 o'clock, and I'm telling you, with a little bit of a lead foot, you can be there in three hours in a real car. <laughs> I'm telling you. So get on down there, no problem. So, Coach, good luck to you next Friday night Appreciate and then it. this weekend. I hope you get to again enjoy some college football. So, uh, this past week, Alaska, Texas State took care of business this past week. 41-12 victory over Florida International, but the Bobcats head to Waco for an 11 o'clock game Saturday. So, good thing you got no Saturday morning practice. You can, if, if, you, if, you, if you get up in time, <laughs> you can check out that 11 maybe. o'clock match. Well, Coach, what is it going to take, in your opinion, for the Bobcats to pull an Appalachian State this week and get the big Sun Belt upset against Baylor. Yeah, I think, you know, I think what you got to be careful of if you're a Texas State fan, which I am, if you're just a football fan, don't judge any team on its opener because you never know what you have yet, you know, and good coaches figure out what they got and they and they make it better. Like, you know, everybody's on the Texas, you know, bandwagon. Everybody knows I'm Oklahoma State, so everybody's on the Texas bandwagon now. They got to show me they're going to, you know, just didn't have one big game, you know. Right. So uh, I think uh, Coach Spaz is going to do a great job of building momentum um uh, better looked okay they didn't look great you know this week so uh let's let's get behind them yeah no, no, i'll ask you a co- since it's not your team this is a co- question no coach likes but since it's not your team i think i'll do it yeah. just obviously winning is the goal what is a law what is an acceptable loss to baylor what do you feel what's what's a hey yeah, that, that, that's a hell of a game for the bobcats then the second half you're in a ball game like you're you're okay. playing a big 12 team the big 12 champs right last right. year you're playing the former big 12 champs and uh, and you and you got a fighting chance in that thing in the second half. So if you're in the game in the second half, absolutely, you have a lot to look forward to. Absolutely, the as well. Then, yep. All right. Well, thank you to Vipe and our producer Josh. He's putting together this huge, great platform for us to showcase Rattler Nation. Also, thank to our student producers for working in the control room here at the San Marcos High School Rattler Broadcast Studio. Remember, you can catch us live every Monday night at 6 p.m. on the Vipe YouTube channel, or at your convenience, just type in V Y P E Vipe on YouTube, find their channel and search Rattler Up. Well, that's going to do it for this week. So for Coach Walsh, I'm CJ Odom, and you're on Rattler Up.